Seto Dumelo. And so that's news that's just coming in. And also, while we were on break another one that came in was that four ndc supporters had been shot by military officers of a fraudulent um recollection of results in techiman south constituencies to report a death so far but don't worry we have our reporters on the ground we'll be crossing over to them shortly to bring you some updates now i know lots of us have been waiting for the electoral commission to declare the results they have already come out to tell us that well the 24-hour window they gave us will not be possible because they want to give us credible results but in the meantime, they've released some of the parliamentary results and I'll take you through them uh, briefly and then have a conversation with my guest, Dr. Jamal Mohammed, who is a direct, um, who is with the research department at the uh, Koforidia Technical University. And so very first on the list is the Asin North constituency results coming in from the um, Electoral Commission. The seat has been won by the NDC. It was formerly... Uh, for the NPP, uh, it was the NPP that was occupying the seats. Now it's been taking over. Yes. So, okay, let me move on to Cape Coast North. Uh, Kwamena Menta Nyako is the candidate that has won now. The seat was uh, occupied by the NPP. Uh, now the NDC has taken over Kwamena Menta Nyako. Cape Coast North, uh, the seats for Barbara uh aec who is uh deputy minister for works and housing she lost that seat to the ndc as in north constituency npp had that seat they've lost it to the ndc james jachi kwe Singh lost that seat to the ndc and uh, these are results as you can see coming from the electoral commission and moving on to the triple Etimokwa constituency. The seat was for the NPP and now it's been taken over by the NDC as well there uh, by Vondet T.G. David uh, as coming in from the Electoral Commission. Um, next is the KEEA constituency Samuel Atamilt. It was for the NDC. It was an end. It was for. It was an NDC occupied seat, still maintained by an NDC and the same candidates, I must say. And then moving on, the Ekumfi constituency. Now this seat was uh, meant was for the NPP. It was an NPP candidate that was occupying the seat um, after the election 2020. Even lost to the. NDC now. I'll come back to these certified results coming in from the Electoral Commission. But let me take you to Tamale and speak with my colleague Redwan Karim Dini Osman. Hello, Redwan. Hello, Redwan. Hello, Sewa. Yes, Redwan. Uh, it's good to see you. I hope that you're staying safe. What's new? So there is so much euphoria on the ground ahead of that all-important declaration by the Electoral Commission. I mean, whether later today, whether it is tomorrow, one thing I can tell you for sure is that the people of Tamale Central are so excited. You see a lot of the young people on their motorbikes, on the streets, parading colors of the NDC, colors of the MPP just to show you how excited they are and so there is so much excitement on the ground right now but i will try and speak to a couple of them uh, you're live on gh1 tv what's your name oh uh, my name is isahak zuliki for um okay. i'm an indigenous of this um area electoral area okay i mean you, you seem so excited i mean what was it yes um, i'm so excited because um uh, out of the uh, 18 seats in Northern Region, uh, we were able to uh, snatch to to add, add into our nine that we have uh, initially, and then it's now 11. Are we are you talking about the NPP? Yeah, the NPP has managed, and then it has worked hard to uh, to get more to to get two seats in addition to the nine that they have, and it's now 11 against seven. That's what I'm happy for, and then. 
for the first time in uh, the history of this country, uh, northern region has turned blue. We've won it massively, and then, but uh, it's quite unfortunate that Kamal Central we uh, we lost it to to, uh, the, to the former MP of uh, Mutala uh, Muhammad. But it was a killing contest. Just that uh, it was just he won by a margin of six thousand votes, if I can say. But we gave it to him. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. And so, Lily, that is the uh, so, uh, that is the situation here. Uh, you you uh, you you come here. You realize a lot of young people have lined the streets, chanting all manner of slogans. They are so excited. But there is one unique thing you also find. You see a lot of them clad in colours of both the MPP and NDC, indicating that no matter the outcome, no matter what Jimensa says, one thing is for sure. Okay, we apologize for that. We'll try uh, and reconnect and bring you that conversation back with Ridwan Karimbini Osman reporting live from Tamale in the northern region. And I'll be having a conversation with Dr. Uh, Jamal on, you know, the, the, the fact that for the first time the northern region has turned blue and a lot of people are attributing it to the Baumia factor. We'll interrogate that a lot more. But uh, let me go to the Volta region now and speak with Faisal Abdul Idrisu. Hello, Faisal. Hello, Faisal. Hi, Sawa. Good evening. Uh, good, evening, good evening, Faisal. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, tell us the feeling in, in the Volta region. Okay, Faisal, I, I don't know where you are, if you can tell us. I'm so far, has shown that President John Dramani Mahama, former, is still a popular commodity for the people of the Volta region, despite uh, claims of monetization. But most especially in the Hohoi constituency and that of the Kutunov constituency, they believe that the people of the voter region are still accepting not only the NDC, but accepting their flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama. They Faisal, are not worried um, hold at on all, for me if you uh, can hear me. With the numbers that hello, the MP Faisal. is getting in the region, they do not think, yeah, hello, Sawa, can you hear me? Yes, good, I can hear you now. I, I want you to start from the top because there was a um, bad connection and we couldn't hear you. Okay, great. So the NDC in the voter region are. We just address the press okay. on happiness regarding the election. All and right. basically, they are saying that despite... Uh, Hello? Hello? Yes, Faisal, I can hear you. Good. And so, despite... Uh, they are alleging that there was so much monetization, especially uh, in the corporate constituency and that of the cutting off constituency. So, uh, the vote margin the MPP is getting in the region, though, is a bit more appreciable it is not a cause for alarm. They are not afraid. They are not worried. Uh, they are optimistic that the NDC will be declared All once right. again. Faisal, hold on for election. me. Faisal, hold on for me. I'll come to you shortly. Let me go to Ashaiman now because I understand the constituency is about to declare the winner. Let's take you live to the Ashaiman constituency and join in that feed. Indeed, Sarah. Um, um, Mr. Lakme has just been declared winner for the parliamentary elections. Let's hear the figures for the presidential elections. Total rejected ballots is 1,589. And total valid ballots is 
Now there were 12 candidates, starting from now on. Nana Dudangwa Akupwadu had 41,485. John Dramani Mahama had 76,343. Christian Babna Andrews had 944. Ivor Babna Green Street had 43. Ephria Donko had 23. Henry Herbert Blatty had 6. Hassan Ayariga had 32. Kofi Festival Akalu had 23. David Apesera had 29. Bridget Dobanuku had 17. Nanak Nedra Jiman Rollins had 15. And Alfred Mami Asidi Walker had 20. Thank you very much. So, so uh, just as you can see in your shot, uh, Mr. Nobe has just been declared winner and the presidential elections from our president John Dramani Mama also have been declared winner. And so you see, there's a lot of anticipation here and very soon he will address the press, which is about doing now. All right, thank you very much. Um, Daniel Latte, our correspondent in the Ashaiman constituency, you see in your shot, uh, the incumbent member of parliament who just retained his seat, Ennis Nogbe. Let me take you back to the Volta region and engage Faisal Abdul Idrisu. He was just telling us that the NDC held a press conference a while ago and they said that unlike what people are thinking, the candidate John Romani Mahama is still very popular in the region and they think that the seats that John Peter Mewu won uh, there's a lot of vote buying according to the NDC if Faisal is ready hello Faisal hello Faisal hi Sawa great it's so good to have you back yes there you are I you... Faisal hi, yes I hope you can hear me now yes I can hear you very loud and clear uh, great so the position of the NDC in the Bota region is that Mr. John Mahama remains a popular product, a sellable product. And for that matter, if you look at the results coming from the various constituencies, you realize that even though the MPP is making appreciable gains in the constituencies, John Mahama continue to win and sweep the constituencies in the Bota region with greater margin. If you take a closer look at Hawkeye, for instance, and that of cutting off, and especially a catching off, a smaller constituency, you realize that even though the MP, which is uh, Honorable Peter Nochukoti, have lost over 2,000 votes from that of the 2016 vote. In 2016, he had over 11,000. This time around, he has dropped down to somewhere around 9,000 votes. He has lost 2,000. Now, if you go back to the presidential uh, result, you realize that Mr. Mahama has even won more than the MP has done in the catching off constituency. So basically, the NDC in the voter region are saying that there was so much vote buy, which they are saying that the MPP got money from the COVID-19 fund and many other monies are available to themselves that at this point in time when elections were due, they were sharing around. So this influenced people's decision, most especially in the parliamentary uh, result. But for the presidential, they remain optimistic that uh, John Dramani Mahama, flag bearer of the NDC, will be declared winner of the election. The hardware case is a serious one for the people uh, of the NDC in the voter region. They are saying that not only uh, was there a vote buying uh, agenda in Hawkeye, but also there was a tribal politicking such that the covenant of the South areas, that is uh, Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likwe, and Lulubi, uh, was conceived from day one to make sure that uh, the NDC is not able to win the Hawkeye seat any longer. And so uh, the, the coming out of this area out of the Hawkeye constituency was simply deliberate and calculated to make sure that Amawu wins the seat. So basically, they are saying that uh, the NDC is not worried about the figures uh, that are tripling in from the various constituencies. They remain resolute and confident that John Dramani Mahama will be declared winner of the general elections. All right, thank you very much. Faisal Abdul Idrisu is a man in the Volta region there, and you heard him very clearly.
when he says that the NDC says John Dramani Mahama is still a very sellable product in that region and absolutely nothing um, will change their minds. Let me take you back to the certified results that came in from the Electoral Commission as I was taking you through them a little earlier. Um, I've been able to go through uh, Cape Coast South, Cape Coast North. Okay, I'll come back to that. But let's go to um, Wenchi and speak with Joshua Nanakwami Ayirao. Joshua, you are in Techiman. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a different Joshua. I have a Joshua here at GH1. We have a Joshua here. Uh, Joshua, thank you very much for joining us. But that's not that Joshua. Hello, Joshua. Yeah, hello. Thank you for joining us, Joshua. Joshua, where are you reporting from? Okay, unfortunately, we seem to um, have lost connection with Joshua. Okay, Joshua, you, you, you're back. Hello, Joshua. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us, Joshua. Tell us exactly where you are and what you can report. I'm currently at Donkok Road in the Kowa Farm Place North constituency where the member of parliament has just declared as the winner once again in the presidential election. I various votes being obtained by both the presidential candidates and the parliamentary candidate for the Goa Farm Place North constituency. With the presidential, NPP had Hello, Joshua. 5,160. Hello, Joshua. 793 votes. Joshua, can you hear me? Boom. Hello, Joshua, can, can you hear, hear me? Loud and clear. Please uh, be stationary. Be, stop yeah, moving. We cannot hear you. Hello, Joshua. Okay, unfortunately, we have issues hearing Joshua Tete there. Uh, we'll try and reconnect back to him. But you're watching GH1 Television. This is your election hub. We are streaming on Facebook. You know what to do. Pick up your phone, tweet at us, and use the hashtag EIB Election Hub. And let me go back to the certified results from the Electoral Commission I was bringing to you earlier, just about um, 10, 12, 13 of them. I've taken you through some already and like i said i know that a lot of us today were expecting to hear from the electoral commission because earlier madame jean mensa said that uh, in 24 hours the ec would be able to declare the results well the ec says that to be able to give us credible information that deadline has been postponed a new deadline will be put out in the public in due course but uh, let's go back to the constituency Wins the Akumfi constituency, the seat was for the NPP. It's been slashed by the NDC in the very, uh, the just ended parliamentary elections. The total vote obtained by the candidate of the NDC, Abeku Krenso, was 16,037. So that's it for the Akumfi constituency. And then for the Ewutu Senya West constituency, where George Neyinanda was the MP, uh, being for the NPP. He lost that seat to uh, Gisela Tete Agbotui with 32,708 votes. So it's moved from the NPP to the NDC. Now, that's not the only interesting part of it. In 2016, George Anda took the seat from Gisela's big sister. And in 2020, big sister, right? Big sister. And in 2020, uh, the younger sister has taken it back and taken it back to the family of the Tete Agbotui family. Yeah, family dynasty there. I'm sure that it will continue or someone will come and then it will go back into the family. But that's it for the Ewutu Senya West constituency.
<laughs> that's a, that's a good one. Yes, Gabriela. I'm sure that she has ambitions. And moving on. Okay, there. Uh, Herman Lower Dentra constituency. Um, Bright Reku Brobe is the candidate. He won with the NPP. It was still an NPP seat and it's maintained an NPP seat. He won with 14,791 votes for the NPP. Hasn't changed, hasn't flipped, hasn't flopped. It's still the same uh, for that constituency. And then Cape Coast South, Kweku Rikitagan. I don't know how many of you remember Kweku Rikitagan, but in 2016, no, actually, um, in 2020, 2019, I guess, he wanted to be presidential candidate for the NDC. He was going to contest with President Mahama Guzitano and the rest, uh, but that's him, Kweku Rikitegan. He was the MP before. Uh, he's still the MP. He's won again by 21,118 votes. So that seat has been maintained by the NDC, the Cape Coast South constituency, Kweku Rikits. Hey, Gun, congratulations to all the winners so far. Um, I don't know if you're still staying in Cape Coast or moving out of uh, the central region. Let's still stay in the central region. Ascend Central Kennedy Ohini Japan of the NPP. Kennedy has been in Parliament. This will be his fourth term in Parliament. And he's won again with 19,754 votes. Now, if you'd permit me, I'm sure a lot of you are asking by what margin did Kennedy Japan win the seats. Well, I have that details right here on your EIB election hub. It wasn't such a cool chop for Kennedy Japan wasn't such a cool chop at all and um i'll come back to it i'm trying to find it i'm sure that i will uh get a hold of it pretty soon but um yes as in central certified results the ndc candidates got 14,747 votes so there's a margin but it wasn't as wide as a lot of people must have expected but kennedy won he's won Three times, this is his fourth time of winning the Asin Central seat uh, for the NPP. And then Asin South, John Intim Fodjo, he came into the scene in 2016 for the NPP and he still maintains the seat for the NPP. He won with 17,121 votes for the NPP. Reverend John Intim Fodjo. Now, and back to what I was telling you earlier, that the Electoral Commission, um, as we all expected, because we were told by them that the results will be released in 24 hours, they've come out with this statement to say that we don't want to rush into things, we want to give you credible um, results. And so we've extended our timeline for declaring the 2020 presidential election results. The new timeline will be communicated shortly. I'm still in the studio with Dr. Jamal Mohammed, he's head of research for Florida Technical University. Doc, um, I, we are going to get into the details of this, but let me start with the very latest. John Dumelo writing to the uh, district electoral officer for a recount of the ballots. Too early, too late? Uh, if you look at election results and then the legal framework by which you can contest it mm -hmm. you have a time lapse okay and so in legal terms if he waits too much before he contests it he may be uh, giving out his right okay and so if you have had issues with elections as he has proclaimed it is good that you make it very known and so that the, the process will kick start they say who, who comes to equity must come with clear hands mm. And so he knows that maybe there are issues that he thinks that uh, he's, he's clean. He, f he felt that there are other parts of uh, the electoral process we think that fraud has been, maybe has gone through. And so he would like to start his horse running faster before it's too late for him. And so it's not too late. It's, and it's also a legitimate process, which I think that is very necessary. Okay. All right, if you just joined us, let me quickly read that um, release from John Dumelo again. The NDC's parliamentary candidate for the Ayawasu West Wugon, John Seto Dumelo, just tweeted this. He said that he addressed a letter to the district electoral officer, Ayawasu West Wugon constituency. I humbly write to your office seeking for a recount of all ballot boxes 
across the constituency. Now, this is due to several irregularities that has been identified in some polling centers. One of such irregularities was swapping of my figures uh, of the NPP's candidate's figures. Oh, okay, and that of the NDC, NPP's parliamentary uh, candidate's figures at some polling census and counting on your usual cooperation and already on social media i see a lot of people asking john to take the loss already and move on um you think so or you still think that he should i, I think that details? i think that if we always allow the legal remits to, to to follow due process we get to the bottom of whatever we want to do with civility you know in our part of the world we have actually not valued what the law can do if you disagree with what is legitimately being contested then you follow the, leg the, the legal processes and um as i said if you look at the uh, the differences it's about 2000 something yeah and so if he's alleging and he actually has proved when you once you go you're going to you're going to prove if you, you have alleged you will have to prove and so once he's he believes that there are certain infractions that have occurred in the process then he's contesting that the law allows the the, the the CI allows for how these process could be dealt with. And so, at the end of the day, the, uh, uh, the Electoral Commission will look at it. Then they will, if there is a need or there is, a, a, there is something important in whatever, what, whatever he's putting across, they will look at it and it will, they, it will be dealt with. All right. Uh, if you're watching us on television, we are live on Star FM as well. We are live on Empire FM. But if you're watching us on television, you see... Our projected results from our EIB Election Hub Coalition Center. And you see that out of 144 constituencies, um, from 144 constituencies out of 275, the NPP candidate jo, um, Nanado Danko Ekufuado is leading with 49.44% against the NDC 49.23%. Percent. This is GH1 Television. Let us know of the issues that we are discussing uh, on social media. You can tweet at us using the hashtag EIB Election Hub. Let's take you to the Dom Kwabenya constituency now. Fritz Delanya Megashi is uh, a man on the ground there. Hello, Fritz. Hello, Sewa. Good evening to you once again. Good and we're evening, coming to Fritz. you live from the Dom Kwabenya constituency. Well, the declaration was made a while back few minutes ago so the returning officer announced the presidential results and declared the parliamentary winner of the don Pavinia constituency and just engage me let indulge me let me run by you the presidential results in this constituency so for the mpb the mpb has 78467 the national democratic congress at 50000 136, just in line with what we projected early on. Groom had 611, CPP has 75, GFP had 40, GCPP has 6, APC had 22, LPG had 24, PNC had 22, PPP 73, NDP 24, the independent candidate had 19, and the rejected ballot was 103 and 100. 1,352 and the total vote cast was 129,519. Now for the parliamentary, the NPP in person of the incumbent MP, Ajoas uh, Terasapo, had 75,041 and the NDC had 52,262. Groom had 804. LPG had 221. PNC had 221, the independent candidates had 271, rejected ballot was 868. So that has been the results here at the Duncan Vineyard constituency. Apparently, it's one of the largest in terms of the number, 173,000 voter population, all coming out to cast their ballots. And finally, after 12 hours, nearly 12 hours, of waiting in the college room these are the results we've been finished with um with from the returning officer at this constituency bringing the winner of the parliamentary um the parliamentary as the current mp sarah adjustable and of course 
the president, Namado Dampe Kufuado, has won this constituency again, except that for this time around, the margins have decreased, especially for the parliamentary. But for the presidential, um, it's a bit bigger, with just 2,000 votes. So the NDC is gradually inching to their resolve of breaking the dominance in this constituency. But that would be a matter of time before we see all of that. So it's been a wrap of activities. You don't see a lot of people in the hall because earlier the MP was here to sign the results and to them they had already projected the win so they had a celebration early on as we brought to you um, earlier and so they currently have left their home to their homes to continue there's still some little celebration going on outside um, on the back of that resort that have been declared over here the Don Kominya constituency so it's been a wrap here at the Don Kominya constituency in the greater Accra region the electoral commission's biggest and the highest voter population constituency in the greater Accra region let me just reiterate again that the one who won this constituency is the current MP, making her a third time winner of this uh, parliamentary seat, Sarah Adjusta for the incumbent MP of Don Pabenya constituency, winning with 78,000, winning with 75,041 votes. 75,041 votes. 75,041 votes. And Ellie can come in out with 52,000. 262. So those are the results here from the Don Kovinia constituency and it's finally been a rough long day but finally we have a declaration and we have an MP Sarah Ajoa Staffel. Sarah. All right. Thank you very much Fritz Delanya Megashi as our correspondent in the Don Kovinia constituency. Fritz, good job done. Let me come back to the studio. Dr. Jamal Mohammed, Director of Research at the Kokoridia Technical University. Doc, um, did we finish with the Ayawasu West Wogon well, conversation? Did yeah, we? I think we're almost wrapping up on Before that. Before I cut in, but I'm, I'm seeing something, something interesting. You know, Tell I, me. I, you know, I did some. Can you can see some mapping that I've done here? Yes. If you look at Dom Kwabinya, for example, I told you that uh, leadership is one, yes. and there is also something called voter saturation. Right. Looking at what has happened, mm -hmm. it, despite increasing number of uh, uh, re registrants in that constituency. Ajoa Safo's vote has dipped by 11,000. Mm -hmm. 11,000. If you look at it differently, initially, she won yeah, by a margin of 34,000. It's 000. gone down? Yes. Mm. She won by a margin of 34,096. 34,096. And now, if you look at the current, what's the difference here, you realize that 75,041, 52,262. If you strike the difference, you are going to get something like 23,000. And so the difference between 34,000 and 96 and 23,000 gives you 11,000. What invariably, what this is saying is that there has been a, it's going to be, there's going to be a voter fatigue in the next election. It, it means that voters are beginning to, 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 to see some, some certain things that they need, which they are not finding from her, uh, finding it with her. And if she doesn't take time, the next election is not going to be easy as she's seen it. She's because seen it, eh? 23,000. Because even at the primary level, yeah. it, it was a close shave with yeah. Michael Quaid Jr. We, I, I, I'm sure that yes. you remember. Yes, yes. The and uh, uh, Canada Japan had to come in and other people. And, uh, and campaign for, yeah, for her. her. Do you think that if the NDC had probably put up, quote unquote, a better candidate, uh, they could have won the seat? Maybe. Because Don Kwabenya has a lot of complaints from the residents yeah. yet they continue to vote for her it, maybe even if and is not a better candidate which i will use maybe if they had put in somebody somebody i usually call the local man mm. normally if you look at elections people who tend to relate very well with the indigenous the communal people those uh, people tend to win election and so if NDC had changed their strategy or at the same time they had put in somebody who relates very well with the community, the results would have been different, if right. not very close. We were looking at dipping from 34,000 to 23,000 tells you that 11,000 difference. Mm. Despite even an increasing uh, 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 turnout, at the same time increasing number of voters in that particular locality. Okay. And so it is sending signals to her and to other uh, MPs that the grounds will not always be fertile for you to win. You must do work, and if you don't work, you will not get it. Okay, let's look at the Asin Central seat as well. I mean, it's been a very cool job for Kennedy, yeah, Japan. a Japan, for um, 
several years. But hold on, before we get into that, let me go to Michael Nyako. Hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello, Good, evening. Hello. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Michael, uh, where are you and what can you tell us? All right. So I'm still at the Anya Sotum constituency. That okay. is the other senior high school, the Mary Hall. And that is where the coalition center was. And apparently, the results have been declared. And the FPP, the New Patriotic Party, on a parliamentary level, is leading with 600, that's 6,300. 6,370. NDC follows with 33,781. 33,781. We also have Boom with 831. Boom with 831. CPP with 396. 396 CPP. We have LPG with 43. Four, three, and PNC with 41. The total valid uh, votes are 101,001 and 409. That's 101,409. And the rejected ballots are 649. And we have the total ballot cast as 102,058. Now, quickly to the so on a parliamentary level, the margin between the NPP and the NDC is 30,485. 30, so on the presidential, we have the NPP Party with 56,321. 65,321. And we have NDC at 34,000. 836 34,836 we have boom with 654 654 we have the CPP with 75 we have JFP with 22 we also have JCPP with 5 we have APC with 7 LPG with 32 PNC, 2, PPP, 29, NDP with 22, and the independent candidates with 11 votes. The total votes is um, 101,016. We have the rejected as 1,131, 1,131 rejected ballots. And we have a total cast as... 102,147. So the constituency is properly known for its massive vote for the new patriotic party, and this year wasn't an exception. And the party, I mean, the constituency also voted massively for the new patriotic party, both on the presidential and the parliamentary level. But taking a critical look at the presidential, um, and comparing that to the parliamentary, we realize that we realize that um, with the but you realize that with the parliamentary, it's six thousand, which is an increase than a than a presidential. But the presidential is sixty five thousand three hundred and twenty one. But the parliamentary is sixty six thousand three hundred and seventeen. And the NDC's parliamentary stands at 33,781. Comparing that to the presidential, it's more, it's, it's less, because the presidential too is 34,836, which is very um, surprising here, because here is, I mean, this constituency is well noted for its massive vote for the new patriotic party. And as you can see, the, Dr. Dumako Kisi, who was representing on the ticket of the new patriotic party, won this election within the constituency. All right. Thank you very much. Michael Nyako reporting from the Nyaso Tom constituency, a seat that has uh, predominantly been occupied by the NPP, uh, the new patriotic.
party. Uh, Dr. Jamal, I'll come to you um, a little later. I want us to discuss rejected ballots because, I mean, a whole 1,131 in the Enya Sotium constituency is, is, is pretty worrying. 1,131. Um, I remember speaking with the EC's Director of Elections, uh, Dr. Srivo Kweku, okay. in the run up to the 2020 elections, and he said that the EC was uh, doing a number of things to make sure that we see a reduction in the number of rejected ballots. We will interrogate that a little later. And I think, to be fair, the, the spaces on the ballot paper were uh, bigger this time. There was a two line thick, you know, dividing them, dividing the, yeah. the candidates. And yeah. so, I don't know what exactly went wrong. Was there enough education? We'll come and talk about that. But the um, NDC constituency chairman for the Ayawasu West Wogon constituency, Bismarck Abobi Aite, is disputing final presidential and parliamentary results from the Electoral Commission. According to him, the pink sheets do not tally with the number of polling stations. Hence, he believes an illegality has been perpetuated by the Electoral Commission. He added that the party does not accept the result and will seek legal redress. We'll bring that later. Uh, he had a conversation with my colleague, Lili Mohammed, but we'll bring that to you later, still on the Ayawasu West we'll go. Wogon constituency. But before we, uh, I, I cut in, we were discussing the Asin, Asin, Asin Central, Central constituency. Yes. 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 So if you look at Asin Central, yes. and you follow up to most of the elections that uh, Honorable Kinadia Japan has contested, Let's even cast our mind back to 2016. Mm -hmm. The difference between him and the NDC candidate was 7,361. Mm -hmm. But this particular election, if you look at the difference, it's just under 5,000. Yeah. 19,754 and 14,747. It tells you that the people are gradually, as I said, voter fatigue cuts across everywhere. And unless you are somebody who is doing something different. And so the voters within this constituency are gradually shifting even with this when we have an increase in uh, voter registration so you realize that as he continues maybe perhaps the next election if ndc is able to fill any candidate who is also seen to be doing very well there may be some shock that may come out from that constituency even though with uh, all the things good things that he's doing in that constituency but one of the other things that we have contributed to this is that he's been running to other constituencies to campaign instead of instituting his own camp constituency <laughs> to campaign and so you realize that there has been a dip because it's probably a cool job for him and but you see elections uh, as we said now there we have many people who vote who are now very discerning mm -hmm. and when people are very discerning you can easily not predict them that's why we social scientists most of the times we are saying that one of the most difficult thing to do especially in research is the human being because the human being is very very difficult to be predicted and as and when you think that you have grip on that person the person is slippery right. and so why because the choices we make as human beings vary and at a particular point in time you should rest assured that an individual can just change his mind. We are not like uh, uh, inanimate objects, or we are not like animals, where we can, our behavior can be predicted. Human beings, our behavior is very difficult to predict. For example, you may be looking at somebody, thinking that this is how he's going to behave. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because of your presence, he may change how he's going to behave. And that is very important in, 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 in politics. But here, in the case, he knew he was going to win, which was very much guaranteed. But he actually also has forgotten that the number of votes that you would have obtained will contribute to the fortunes of your political party. Okay, I mean, you talk about voter fatigue, but yeah. um, I, 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 um, I have sitting in front of me here the list of the longest serving members of parliament. There's Alban Bagbin, who of course has bowed out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if the voter fatigue, uh, voter fatigue factor comes in here. Collins Dowda has been in parliament for how many years? And he's won again. Yeah. Uh, is, does, doesn't voter fatigue apply? It does. I mean, it it does. Collins has been in parliament longer than um, Ajua Safo and Kennedy in Japan. You see, it, 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 when you look at voter fatigue, mm -hmm. most of the times it may not gradually, it will not just take you out. It is only in just serious cases that uh, voters will have problem with you and they will just vote you out. 
if you are somebody who in the past has struck some successes what they will do is that they will rather with doing the you will have your votes doing the lies what we are seeing in the case of Canada Japan and even if you look at a previous election in the case of Alban Bagwin yeah. the same thing has happened well, yeah. the same thing has happened today because people have needs and they have perspective about how the needs should be achieved and so when you are over overly present available in front of them it gets to a point that there is boredom boredom setting in and we can tie that one to for example us a city man yeah that's <laughs> you, you, you yeah. understand yeah and all these things happen and political parties sometimes will have to come to terms with this and they will tell you that please we understand you but we think that we have to move forward yeah yeah that's true that's it thank you thank you uh let's move on um i i don't i'm not sure that there are any surprises with the uh, list that i went through so far uh, are there oh surprises is the way uh jordanda was, was taken out even yeah, though we right. knew we knew he was yeah, going to we, win we, 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 we discussed that we knew that he was going to lose but who is they, we you mean the research community yes oh you know <laughs> I, I i have my team okay i have my team who work with me okay. even though we knew that this is how it was going to pan out but yeah. the challenge has been that the quantum because if you you look at his constituency in accra it's not too far mm -hmm. and i have always maintained that any politician who has a constituency in accra and you are lucky to have been to have won power you can hold grip to the power one you are closer to your people you don't have to run like those who are coming from uh, ashanti region from here to Ashanti, like uh, about four hours or those who are coming from the northern regions yet they have to attend to their constituents as well as doing parliamentary duties but once your constituency constitu is very close to accra you should be able to do multi-taxing you should be multi-taxing and you should be able to carry everybody along and so when people when the uh, his opponent went down to the constituency you saw him on television yeah and he felt very comfortable and he's been booted out and that is one of the surprises that uh, i have seen okay let's move away from the um parliamentary results that have come in um if we have more when we have more we will go back to it but earlier i told you about the shooting incident that happened in techiman my colleague joshua nana Pame, he rides on the beats in a bit we'll cross over to him and get some more updates but um you know we were really hoping that this violence that characterizes our electoral process would have been done with by now unfortunately we we see them yesterday um two people died in the Ododododo constituency um yesterday too there was a, a shooting incident involving some supporters initially we were told they were journalists uh, later we find out we found out they were in journalists one was shot in the stomach one was shot in the hand and i understand that about three of the the, the guy's fingers are gone and now this in Techiman. will we ever get to a point where we can eradicate this violence that characterizes our electoral process from the system yeah i'm very sure if you look at uh, this year's election it has been very minimal uh we have many of the people who were involved in those things let me put them in quotes many of them haven't been to school so much mm -hmm. and so uh, they don't actually have jobs to do and those who s sought to perpetrate such uh, uh, an evil practice like those who are seeking to become mps when they sought to per perpetrate those acts normally will, will enlist people who, who are very vulnerable in the society but it's one one thing that i was very happy i was just lying down and i was watching a video mm -hmm. that was yesterday yeah and in the morning one gentleman who virtually when you look at his face you know that this gentleman perhaps have been taking those hardcore drugs the gentleman said oh this time around our eyes are open we are not going to allow any politician to use us it, it means that a lot of sensitization that have gone over the years is impacting but unfortunately my challenge has been that the security forces haven't profiled some of these areas should have intensified security in those areas which okay. i think that they are also very much challenged as far as the number of security uh, agency availability is concerned and so it is our hope and my hope that we would begin to now look at the synergies 
And we also look at some coordinated efforts where we lack as a country. We need to fill the gap. Then we have to do that. And another thing is that I mentioned moral suasion some time mm-hmm. ago. We need to talk to people. You go to any community, civility comes from many people beginning to understand, look, we must begin to live with each other peacefully. When we're all growing away, some are like feeling hot when there is a political issue. Mm-hmm. But you get to understand that. It is not a deal and then affair. Right. And so we continue to sensitize people. At the same time, we allow the legal process to follow. Most of these guys, they will do all those things. We have the same politicians will be the first to go to the police station when they are arrested. And you don't know by virtue of what will happen before the same, the same person will be released. And so if we allow the process to work and we also allow the legal process to work freely without anybody interfering, people will know that, okay, if I get myself involved in this particular act, I'll be allowed, I'll be made to face the full rigors of yes. the law. Yes, yeah, well, I was coming to that. That's right. And, mm-hmm. if, and when we do that, we have a civil society. My dear, it's very important that we should sit in Ghana and you feel comfortable that you can choose who you want to vote for. And as long as you do that and nobody harms you or you don't have a harm comes your way, then this is good. But unfortunately, we know people, very, people who are MPs, their behavior very appalling, yet people will clap for them because they will put power. And until such a time that we begin to now decipher as a state and say, look, no matter you are standing in the society, once it is wrong, it is wrong. But this is the case, if someone, someone will, will do that, his opponents will want to criticize it, it turns into political eye, and it becomes a different issue altogether. And the people who are supposed to do something will do nothing. Do you think that the peace pact that uh, the two main political parties signed could have helped in what we are seeing? Uh, because you say that it's been minimal. Yes, it, it helped, but if it had come earlier, it would have been good. The peace pact? Yes, because, you see, uh, some people see that as a window dressing. Mm-hmm. A pact that is signed just getting into election. How long will it take to fester and manifest itself and to be able to impact on whatever they want to do? But unfortunately, they sign one thing and they speak, they do something different. And this goes to all the political parties. The fact still remains that if we actually want to reduce the, 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 the rates and the effect of political violence in our elections, then the first thing we must do is to increase and resource state institutions which are charged to do that mandate. We have been given that mandate. For example, SEC. Yeah. It has been under-resourced. Yeah. And it is not, sometimes we always, it is not even in the interest of the politicians to resource it, which is very terrible as a state. So we should, we, we have, the first thing we must do is to resource them. And two, we should hold them accountable to see the work that they have done. NCC should, should be able to do research. They should do research. To, we don't need police to tell us this is a hotspot area. Though it's a security issue, but through research, they're able to uncover all of this. Years before, the, several months prior to election. And so, as a nation, it is in our duty. And I'm telling you, when there is violence, it doesn't see Mr. A or Mr. B. Okay. All right. Um, hold on, I'll come back to you, but we have some live pictures from the EC headquarters with military presence there. We're showing that to you. Um, that's the Electoral Commission headquarters, and that's just across the street just from our uh, office here. Mm. I'm sure, you know, uh, they are there ready because they thought that the the announcement we'll the done. declaration would, yeah. would would have been done today mm-hmm. but that's it very detailed yeah. very detailed military presence at the electoral commission um headquarters here in accra and so these are live pictures for you uh you can really only get it here that's our office in the cut do you see it our building the platinum place yeah, yeah. yes very detailed, I must say. I mean, these and things, they scare me. When I, when I see a lot of these things, the barricades, look, oh, the road has been it's, blocked, it's, actually. It's, it's normal. It's normal. You see, one thing is that a miscreant doesn't care how uh, these things are done. So we have somebody, he takes in uh, energy drink, which uh, he has chamo into it. And now, do you know that now they are taking a, a, this thing, a, this cup shop, Samalin? When I went to Tamale, we were doing some work. Oh, yes. You know, even here at GH1 Television, we 
we did a project on the abuse of tramadol and you found out that it wasn't just tramadol no. so the cough syrups yes they and added ashish it's, it's some, serious. some inhale um urine they are very terrible things and yes some inhale urine some not uh, um apologies in tamale they, 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 when, when i went to the north there is this thing that they did it's like they inhale it and what happened was that you when they use it on their teeth they just use the brush their teeth they can sleep like six hours and normal people are using it too when i mean normal people people who are educated someone brought me one and he said oh this one if i'm worried and i don't want to be worried i should just use it on my teeth i said are you serious and this thing is these things are going on and the society we are getting more 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 complex okay so yes we brought you live pictures from the um electoral commission headquarters and you saw the military very detailed military presence there let me bring you some more figures um from the amasaman constituency coming in from my colleague godwin asidiba the npp for the presidential had 56,735 votes the ndc 54,655. I'll take it again. The NPP at the Amasaman constituency, presidential NPP, 56,735. The NDC, 54,655. GUM, 797. CPP, 50. GFP, 15. GCPP, 13. APC 29, LPG 15, PNC 26, PPP 33, NDP 28, independent candidate 22, and at the parliamentary uh, level, 57,638, NDC 54,519. PPP 371, NDP 186, rejected ballot 817. Doc, don't forget that we will discuss the rejected ballot issue and then we'll discuss the Ghana Union movement. How he's able to pass PPP, CPP, the electric shock. We'll talk about that. But there's jubilation at uh, the EDPP headquarters. I saw a video earlier, but uh, my man, my man, our colleague, uh, Musa Lansa is at the NPP headquarters and he joins me. Musa. supporters of the MPP are gathered here and you are dancing to various uh, renditions of hip life and then high life songs that is blazing from some speakers put here by the party. According to what we gather in a couple of minutes, the general secretary of the NPP will be here to address the gathering. When we got here, uh, somebody who uh, we brought identified here was telling them that the, the party is a law abiding party and they will only wait for the electoral commission to declare Nanado the winner of this year's presidential and parliamentary elections. And so they are just waiting for the general secretary of the party to come in. But I'll be engaging some of the members here to find out why the EC hasn't declared yet and they're excited. But how are you doing? I'm good. The EC is yet to declare, but you are so excited. Why? I think provincial figures that are tingling at the moment shows that MPP is in list. So we are just believing. We are just in hope that we will we will be announced winners in an hour or two. So what happens if the results come out and it's not what you want? Oh, I think, I think the win. level of our belief is very high. We can't come down again. We can't come down. We are going to win. We are going to win. It's four more for Nana. 
waiting for the general secretary of the party to come and address them. But at the same time, uh, the president is also expected to address uh, the nation when the electoral commission finally comes out to declare uh, him winner or otherwise. So the stage is set for so many things to happen this night. So uh, you must be here to see how excited the members of the NPP here are. In the visions, several of them surrounding me and dancing. So, all manner of songs here and doing a form of for Nana uh, gestures here and there. So, that is what is just happening here. People are waiting for the general secretary of the NPP to come and address them here at the party headquarters. So, uh, They're still dancing, waiting for the great party general secretary. But in the meantime, we will be heading back to the residence of the president as he's preparing to address uh, the nation if the electoral commission declares him as a winner. But I must also say, around the president's residence, several young men on motorbikes are riding up and down and shouting the four more to do more. Okay, and that was my colleague Musa Lansa from the NPP headquarters. Uh, you saw the cheers and jeers from that place, and we are told in a bit the general secretary of the party, John Buedo, will be there maybe to speak with them. We'll find out shortly. But uh, Dr. Jamal, we cannot say it's a case of premature um celebration can we i mean they say that they have their results they took us to the coalition room today and from what the, they have the figures they have clearly shows that they are in a comfortable lead according to what they say according to what they say <laughs> you know, one, i had to add that yes one thing is that because we are law-abiding country and we believe in due process and legal uh, processes uh, these are these are normal practices but we still have to wait till electoral commission declares the okay. results. Okay, uh, Doc, hold on for me. I apologize for rudely interrupting today, but let's take you to the Accra International Post. Conference Center. The head of corporate affairs, uh, public affairs, Sylvia Nois, is speaking now for the electoral commission.
credible, compelling, and comprehensive election coverage on TV, radio, and online. Election coverage. And you're welcome back to GH1 Television. This is your EI.